tell you that story accurately and impartially and in a way that really means something. Live from London, this is BBC News. World leaders arrive in India's Delhi for this year's G20 summit. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will be landing shortly. Peter Navarro, a former trade advisor to President Trump, is found guilty of criminal contempt over the capital attack. And hours after being appointed, the new boss of Japan's main talent agency is also being accused of sexually assaulting young boys. King Charles III hails his mother's life as one of devoted service in an audio message to mark the first anniversary of her death. Hello, welcome, I'm Tanya Beckett. Leaders are arriving at the G20 summit, which is just getting underway now in Delhi, India. The G20 group consists of 19 of the world's wealthiest economies and the European Union. It accounts for 85 percent of global economic output and two thirds of its population. It's a key forum for international issues, but there are deep divisions over some of these. For example, the war in Ukraine. One of the first leaders to arrive will be the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, whose Indian heritage will attract extra attention. The BBC's South Asia correspondent Samira Hussein now reports around the world and across the UK. This is BBC News. Make landfall. You're live with BBC News, I'm Tanya Beckett. The military junta in Gabon has appointed an opposition leader as interim prime minister following last month's coup. Raymond Ndong Sima stood against the ousted president, Sali Bongo, in recent elections. He had previously served in the Gabonese government in a number of roles, including that of prime minister. Earlier, there were calls for the deposed leader, Ali Bongo, to face justice after the coup leaders allowed his release from house arrest on grounds of ill health. They'll say he'll be free to travel abroad for medical treatment. Our correspondent, Thomas Nadi, is in Gabon. Uh, it looks like the FTA will be a little way away. And I should add, there are others in the queue watching the UK-India FTA. So if that so, goes through, Australia is looking uh, to go ahead as well. So and Canada seen, is also in that. There way. we must leave it. Thank you very much indeed. This is BBC News. This is BBC News. Here are the headlines. World leaders arrive in India's New Delhi for this year's G20 summit. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will be landing shortly, becoming the first Prime Minister of Indian heritage to visit the country. King Charles III hails his mother's life as one of devoted service in an audio message to mark the first anniversary of her death. And shares in Apple fall more than 6% in two days after reports the Chinese government workers are banned from using iPhones at work. Today marks one year since the death of the late Queen Elizabeth II and the moment the reign of King Charles began. The King has recorded a message paying tribute to his mother's devoted service. Our royal correspondent Nicholas Witchell looks back at King Charles' first year on the throne. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And we'll keep you up to date, of course, with the events at the G20 around the world and across the UK. This is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. I'm Tanya Beckett. 
The Rugby World Cup kicks off across France tonight as the hosts take on the All Blacks in Paris. Organisers have hailed it as the most competitive Rugby Union World Cup ever. But there have been security concerns after the chaotic scenes at last year's Champions League final in the capital. Our sports editor Dan Rowan is in Paris getting ready for what promises to be a tournament to remember. And we'll keep you up to date with the events there and, of course, those in India, in Delhi, where the G20 meeting is getting underway. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Rishi Sunak lands in India for this year's G20 summit. He is the first British Prime Minister with Indian heritage to visit the country. Peter Navarro, a former trade advisor to President Trump, is found guilty of criminal contempt over the capital attack. And the manhunt for Daniel Khalif continues. The prisoner is on the run for the last two days after escaping Wandsworth Prison. And hours after being appointed the new boss of Japan's main talent agency is also being accused of sexually assaulting young boys. Hello and welcome, I'm Tanya Beckett. Leaders are arriving at the G20 summit, which is just getting underway now in Delhi in India. The G20 group consists of 19 of the world's wealthiest economies and the European Union. It accounts for 85% of global economic output and two-thirds of its population. It's a key forum for international issues, but there are deep divisions over some of these. For example, the war in Ukraine. One of the first leaders to arrive has been the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, whose Indian heritage will attract extra attention. The BBC's South Asia correspondent uh, Samira Hussein joins us now then from Delhi. Samira, so uh, the very eagerly awaited of Rishi Sunak, the British PM, has happened. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News, I'm Tanya Beckett. Health authorities in the UK have published new data about the latest COVID variant. It appears to show that transmission is taking place in the community, although there is not enough data to know how much of a threat to public health it poses. Live now to our health editor, Hugh Pym, who joins us from the newsroom. Hugh, what more can you tell us? The French State Council, the highest administrative court in the country, has rejected a bid to overturn the recent ban on the abaya. A community group sought an injunction to stop the ban being applied following the announcement of Education Minister Gabriel Attal two weeks ago. At least 67 girls were sent home from school in France this week after refusing to change out of the garments schools placed within the criteria. This is BBC News. This is BBC News. Here are the headlines. King Charles III praises his mother's life as one of devoted service in an audio message released on the first anniversary of her death. Rishi Sunak lands in New Delhi for the G20 summit. He says he will be welcomed as a son-in-law of India. And YouTube will start verifying health workers in the UK to battle the spread of disinformation online. And a major blow for the government, an auction of renewable energy ends with no buyers for offshore wind farms, dashing the hopes of decarbonising electricity production in the UK.
Today marks one year since the death of the late Queen and the moment the reign of King Charles began. The King has recorded a message paying tribute to his mother's devoted service. Our royal correspondent Nicholas Witchell looks back at King Charles' first year on the throne. I'm Tanya Beckett. Thanks for joining us. This is BBC News. Hello there, we've had a bit of cloud around this morning, some mist and fog. Much of the mist and fog has started to clear away and the, the clouds are clearing too. More typical for September, 17 to 22 degrees. It stays that way for the rest of the week with further showers at times. Bye-bye. Live from London, this is BBC News. Rishi Sunak is in New Delhi for the G20 summit. He says he'll be welcomed as India's son-in-law. The continuing hunt for an escaped terror suspect, Daniel Khalif, is still on the run after breaking out from prison on Wednesday. At least 49 civilians are reported to have been killed in an attack on a Mali riverboat. And King Charles attends a special church service a year after the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. Hello, I'm Tanya Beckett. Welcome. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is among the leaders arriving at the G20 summit, which is just beginning in New Delhi. Gary O'Donoghue there. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Mali has declared three days of national mourning after more than 60 people were killed in attacks by Islamist militants. Military authorities say 64 people were killed in two separate attacks in the northeast of the country. A boat on the Niger River and a military camp at Bamba were targeted. 50 militants are also thought to have been killed. With more on this, BBC World Service Africa editor Richard Hamilton joins us. Richard, what more can you tell us about this attack and the mounting problem? Sean, thank you very much indeed. And um, just to say, of course, it is a year since the death of Queen Elizabeth II and King Charles III has been commemorating that at Balmoral. And we will be keeping you up to date with events and with a commemoration of the death of the late Queen. Stay with us here on BBC News. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tanya Beckett. BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. India in the hot seat as leaders head for the G20 summit in Delhi. Their host wants a better financial deal for the developing world in the fight against climate change. Most importantly, they will also be talking about the reform of multilateral institutions like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund and the United Nations Security Council. This is something that India in particular will be pushing for. And a British auction for wind farm developers has attracted no bids, creating challenges for the UK's net zero strategy.
Hello, welcome to World Business Report. I'm Vishala Sripathma. We're going to go straight to Delhi now, where that G20 meeting is taking place. Um, Delhi is hosting the um, the G20 summit with global powers all convening there. And Nikhil Inamda, our correspondent, is there having a look at what's going on. Nikhil, in terms of what India wants to get out of this meeting, what do you think the overarching aim is? I've had quite hard to get the electric heaters to heat, but yeah. Very good. Thank you very much, Richard Jones, who's chairman of the Great Holiday Home Show, uh, which is um, having a big event today in Yorkshire in Harrogate, uh, where all the big manufacturers are going to be modelling their biggest programmes. Now, our top story today is that J20 meeting about Rishi Sunak heading over there to talk about trade deals. That's on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash news. I'm Charlotte Stripatha. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at BBC for Charlotte SB. Thanks for watching. Hello from the BBC Sports Center, I'm Mimi Fawaz. Now, American teenager Coco Goff will play in her first US Open singles final on Saturday after beating Karolina Mukova in a semi-final, which was disrupted by climate protesters. Russell Fuller watched the match in New York for us. We'll have lots more later on the program. See you shortly. Breaking news now, Network Rail has been fined £6.7 million for failings leading up to the train derailment near Stonehaven, which left three people dead. This was in 2020. The company admitted Health and Safety at Work Act breaches at the High Court in Aberdeen after the train hit a landslide following heavy rain. Judge Lord Matthews said no penalty he could impose could come close to compensating those impacted. Health authorities in the UK have published new data about the latest COVID variant. It appears to show that transmission is taking place in the community, although there's not enough data to know how much of a threat it poses to public health. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, was in the newsroom to tell us more about this new variant. Hugh Pym there. Um, now, let's bring you to Hyde Park in London, where there is our commemorative events marking the anniversary of the death of Queen Elizabeth II. We've been hearing from King Charles III a little earlier on. Um, these are preparations ahead of um, a gun salute, which we're going to be, um, which we're going to be hearing in about four minutes time, in fact. Um, quite an extraordinary lineup going on there in Harvard Park. We've heard from uh, King Charles III a little earlier on and his reflection um, his reflections about the support given to him uh, by his late mother, to him and his wife, Queen Camilla. So we'll keep you up to date with that, of course, in a few minutes' time. Now for some weather. Hello there. We've had a bit of cloud around this morning, some mist and fog. Much of the mist and fog has started to clear away and the 